This is ABC 15 News Taking Action. Under investigation, a fire takes the life of a child and leaves several families looking for new places to live. Plus, what will he be remembered for? Harvey Weinstein gives an interview just weeks before his rape trial. And from the south to the northeast, millions of people bracing for severe weather. This as people are amping up for Christmas holiday travel. It is messy in many parts of the country. On this Monday morning, we can tell you it's not messy around here. I'm Kaylee O'Kelly. Thanks for waking up with us. And I'm Mixaletti. Happy Monday to you. Not messy, but it is a little bit colder this morning. So grab that jacket as you head out. Meteorologist Iris and Rocio standing by right now with a quick sneak peek of your most accurate forecast. And you know, it's only going to get colder these next few mornings. Temperatures will be down into the 30s at some point here over the next few mornings. This morning, we're feeling temperatures in the 40s in most spots already. And Phoenix is is down to 47 degrees here as we speak, and I do still think we're going to drop a little further before sunrise. 49 in Mesa, 46 in Avondale, and good morning to you in Glendale. You're still holding on to 50, but I think you'll be in the 40s here soon as well. Winds are light across the valley with the exception of some of our foothills locations. We've got northerly winds coming in, so those winds funnel down the mountain. So if you live on the south side of a mountain, then it's likely you're feeling some slightly stronger winds. But otherwise, we've got those light winds across the valley, those northerly winds ushering in cooler air behind that cold front that pushed through yesterday. So today's high only reaching 62 degrees. It's sweater weather for sure today. We'll talk about how much lower those temperatures are going to go this week. All right, I like that level of commitment. Sweater weather for sure. Okay, Iris, thank you. It's 431 and right now a head-on crash being investigated. This is Scottsdale near Happy Valley Road in Pima. Phoenix and Scottsdale police both on scene investigating. It's a head-on collision and it does involve two vehicles as we show you these live pictures. We can tell you a total of five people were rushed to the hospital. Two we're told are in critical condition. No word yet on an exact cause, but you can certainly see a lot of damage out there with the investigators. Let's get to a crime alert in Yavapai County. Deputies there are searching for a man accused of stealing a car with two small children inside. 23 year old Dylan Horn is on the run this morning. Investigators say he appeared to be drunk when he stole that car from a home in Rimrock. A four year old and three month old were in the back seat. Law enforcement found the car abandoned a short time later. The kids thankfully were safe and unharmed. Here's a picture of him we want to show you. Police say he has a warrant for several unrelated charges and there is currently a $500 reward for any information leading to his arrest. Also in Yavapai County, a mystery for federal aviation officials. The NTSB confirming they're now looking into a plane crash. Wreckage and a body were discovered Friday morning on a ranch just south of Camp Verde. Investigators don't know who was on board or where that plane was coming from. And now to another big story. We are following a deadly fire at a Phoenix apartment complex. Look at that flame. There are all of them here. The video showing the flames just taking over a family home there. That fire claiming the life of a four year old girl and sending the rest of her family to the hospital. Our Claudia Rupsich is live for us. She's near Dunlap and 23rd Avenue this morning with an update on the rest of her family. Good morning. Kaylee, we know that this deadly fire happened really early yesterday morning. We also know that when firefighters arrived, four people were trapped inside an apartment right behind me here. We know that firefighters were able to rescue three people from a second story window, a 10 year old girl along with an adult man and woman. That child is listed in stable condition along with the man, but the woman remains in critical condition this morning. The little four year old girl did not make it out alive. According to fire officials, this fire could have been even more deadly if the nearest fire station wasn't directly across the street. Those firefighters were sound asleep at 430 in the morning and two minutes later, they were climbing up a ladder making contact with those members of that family. So if that firehouse had been a mile down the road and those folks might not have been able to get out of that apartment. The cause of the fire is still under investigation. We also know that the Red Cross is assisting some of their families that were displaced during this devastating fire. Reporting live in Phoenix this morning, I'm Claudia Rupsich, ABC 15 Arizona. Hey, Claudia, we're thinking of that family this morning. Jurors will be back in the courtroom today to hear closing arguments in the trial of Ramon Bueno. Bueno is accused of attempted murder after police say he shot DPS trooper James Casey in the face during a traffic stop in 2014. Bueno was arrested after a week long manhunt. His attorney pointed out that during cross examination, the trooper picked out a different man in that lineup. 
Also today, the city of Tempe wants the public to talk to our state lawmakers about the impacts of short-term rentals like Airbnbs. A special hearing is happening today at the state capitol. It is open to the public. Lawmakers are looking to update a state law that banned cities from restricting where and how many short-term rentals could be in their communities. That law has loosened up. That was last session. But the city of Tempe pushing for more, the city says. Many landlords are using short-term rentals to make more money, cutting down on the availability of housing, and that's driving up the price of rent. Today's meeting is happening at 5, and there will be a chance for the public to be heard. New information this morning on that chaotic shopping mall shooting in Atlanta that sent shoppers running for their lives this weekend. Police say two teens have been arrested after they fired shots inside the mall here following an argument. Parents fearing the worst. You can see shielding their children here. One person was shot. Their injuries, though, not life threatening. Disgraced movie mogul Harvey Weinstein is speaking out this morning about the allegations against him brought on by dozens of accusers. In an interview with the New York Post, he says he feels like the forgotten man. He says he made more movies directed by women and about women than any other filmmaker, but now all his work is being forgotten. Weinstein is preparing for his criminal trial next month on charges of rape and sexual assault. Last week, he reached a $47 million settlement. We told you about that with some of his accusers to admit wrong, to not admit wrongdoing though in this case. And his studio's insurance company will have to pay the victims, not him. It's not coming out of his own pocket. In Democracy 2020, our coverage continues. There's a big question mark swirling around this Thursday's Democratic presidential debate. That's right, a labor dispute and a picket line putting the event in jeopardy this morning. The seven candidates who qualified vowing they will not cross a union to picket line, a union picket line to get to the stage. So the Democratic Party scrambling to find a resolution. That union representing 150 cashiers, cooks and dishwashers. They're in the middle of an ongoing labor dispute with Sodexo, a company contracted to handle food services for Loyola Marymount University in Los Angeles. After six weeks and $6 million worth of repairs, a canal that brings waters to cities across our state will start flowing again. It should happen tomorrow. The Central Arizona Project Canal is more than 300 miles long. It connects the Colorado River to Tucson. On that journey, it goes through Mesa, where pipes needed to be recoded to protect against rust. According to the Arizona Republic, the Cap Canal is used to supplement supplies from the Salt and Verde Rivers. Well, right now, a dangerous storm barreling towards the East Coast. 35 million people are under weather alerts. We're talking from Colorado to New England. Snow, ice, you can see all of it here. Even rain making for dangerous driving conditions. But that's not all. There is a threat for severe weather in the southern states. States like Louisiana, Alabama could even see tornadoes today. That risk elevated as a cold front moves into that area, too. But look at all of that snow. That's in Kansas City. It was coming down yesterday. I wouldn't be surprised if school was was canceled around that area here today because of all of that snow. Luckily, we don't have to deal with any of that. We had a cold front come through our state, though, and we are certainly feeling the colder air behind it. Look at these temperatures across the state now down into the 30s down in Gila Bend, a 10 degree difference from where Phoenix is at 47. But as you look to the north, the Grand Canyon and now down into the single digits in Flagstaff, you're waking up to colder conditions too at just 14 degrees in the teens in Window Rock, Sedona at just 32 degrees, but in the 20s in Payson and Prescott. This afternoon, not a huge warm up. We'll only reach the low 60s here in Phoenix with lows just barely, or I should say highs just barely above freezing in spots like Flagstaff at 33 degrees today. Then tonight we'll get even colder. We've got freeze warnings for parts of our state. I'll show you where in just a few minutes. Okay, Iris, thank you very much. The United Food Bank is helping families this holiday season by giving out free food to families. It's happening Friday. Anyone in need of assistance can drop by the food bank in Mesa between 8 and noon. The food bank also in need of donations. If you can make one right now at unitedfoodbank.org, that would certainly help. The event Friday will feature Santa and a visit from Big Red, of course, along with the Cardinals cheerleaders who have a lot to celebrate this morning. That's Boom. Right. Speaking of the Bird Gang, stopping their <laughs> six-game losing streak by beating the Cleveland Browns. It needed to happen, right? It was a showdown of the two former QBs from Oklahoma, our own Kyler Murray versus Baker Mayfield. Murray completing 76% of his passes. He looked good yesterday and rushing for 56 yards as he guided the offensive line there on five touchdown drives, three of which came there in the first half. In fact, here's Murray on the team's win. 
it's refreshing. Uh, used to used to feeling that feeling. Um, you know, not uh, yeah, not getting too high, not getting too low. But you know, it's obviously you know we're gonna cherish this one. I mean, you know, we play the Seahawks next week. A great team, so we gotta be ready to play. Oh, yeah, the Seahawks look real good right now. Uh, final score, 38-24 last night. This was the final home game for the Cardinals this season. And speaking of football, college bowl games kick off this week. Here's a list of the ones happening right here on wow. ABC 15. You've got the Celebration Bowl on Saturday, Alcorn Uni State University versus North Carolina, followed by the Cherry Bundy Boca Raton Bowl, SMU taking on Florida Atlantic. And it all wraps up Saturday night with the Mitsubishi Motors Las Vegas Bowl with Boise State taking on Washington. Time now, 440 on this Monday. Facebook is watching you shop how the social media giant has teamed up with retailers to keep a close eye on your purchases. And how about this? If you have kids, you know millions of kiddos are obsessed with these YouTube videos, right? Showing other kids, unwrapping all kinds of gifts. But we're going to share why these videos might be making your kids more demanding. But first, we get you outside. 440 on this Monday, 46 degrees here at ABC 15. Ooh, we'll be right back.